guys, welcome back to my channel. So, if you watched my previous video, or like, which was a few videos ago now, I tried waking up at 5am every single day for eight weeks, and that opened my eyes to, like, what can get done if you wake up that early in the day and all that sort. And a while back I had a request asking for me to do like some tips on how to wake up before 12 p.m. slash noon so lunchtime um for a while I just didn't plan it out like what I wanted to say the tips I wanted to give but now since doing that video it I now have a better idea and after doing a little bit of a search I now have more quality information to give because before if I'd have made it I'd have sort of felt like a fraud because even though I was waking up before lunchtime I still it just doesn't sit right with me until now and I felt like having that video up now means that it allows the gateway for this video I've got I think it's like eight tips so you definitely want to stick around to the end so make sure you hit that subscribe button before you do because honestly my goal is 1000 subscribers by September please let me hit it so make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and leave a like so that other people can see this video if they're maybe struggling to wake up before 12 or if maybe they're waking up a little bit later than they would like because these tips are really going to help them and leave a comment down below letting me know like whether you're going to implement these tips whether you're able to wake up before 12 if you have any tips that I've not mentioned then leave them in the comment section for other people to view and let's just get on to these tips. Tip number two is to set an alarm and set it away from you. Now if tip number one doesn't work then this tip is obviously going to be more beneficial and just pair them together and the reason for this is your body's obviously not wanting to wake up so by setting an alarm it signals to your body wake up plus then with the light coming in you'd it's like a double signal to say to your body, wake up, it's time to go. Like, it's time to get on with your day. And the reason why I'm saying set it away from you is because I know for one, and my friends know that if your phone is near you and it's turned up right so that you can touch the screen, the, your asleep self will turn, it, that, will turn that alarm off. Like, it's happened to me, it's happened to my friend. Like, she's, I think she's at like 20 alarms didn't wake up didn't wake up right any of them your body turns the alarm off especially if it's sound you know so maybe consider changing your alarm sound to something that annoys the hell out of you because surely if it annoys you you're gonna wake up and make sure like your alarms are like different sounds as well so it's like a different thing because your body's used to one sound so it's gonna turn the sound off and your body knows like where to swipe to tap or just how to turn it off so, I don't know how but it does so set it away from you whether that be on the floor on a desk or if you've got another plug that's like further away put your alarm in full volume and leave it in the corner of the room where it's not going to get damaged and then you'll wake up because then when you have to get you wake up and you hear the alarm You'll have to go to the opposite side of the room to turn it off and so by that point your body will be more awake and so you'll be less likely to fall back asleep and go to bed and that sort of thing because when you wake up you need to pee or most people need to pee and so not your body will woken up to say yeah you need to pee so you'll go to the toilet and then you'll be like awake and so you won't go back to sleep get my logic good Tip number two is to set an alarm and set it away from you. Now, if tip number one doesn't work, then this tip is obviously going to be more beneficial and just pair them together. And the reason for this is your body's obviously not wanting to wake up. So by setting an alarm, it signals to your body, wake up, plus then with the light coming in, you'd, it's like a double signal to say to your body, wake up, it's time to go. Like, it's time to get on with your day. And the reason why I'm saying set it away from you is because I know for one, and my friends know that if your 
phone is near you and it's turned up right so that you can touch the screen, the your asleep self will turn it that will turn that alarm off. Like it's happened to me, it's happened to my friend, like she's I think she's at like twenty alarms. Didn't wake up didn't wake up for any of them. Your body turns the alarm off, especially if it's sound you know. So maybe consider changing your alarm sound to something that annoys the hell out of you. Because surely if it annoys you, you're going to wake up. And make sure like your alarms are like different sounds as well. So it's like a different thing. Because your body's used to one sound, so it's going to turn the sound off. And your body knows like where to swipe, to tap, or just how to turn it off. So, I don't know how, but it does. So set it away from you, whether that be on the floor, on a desk, or if you've got another plug that's like further away, put your alarm in full volume and leave it in the corner of the room where it's not going to get damaged and then you'll wake up because then when you have to get, you wake up and you hear the alarm, you'll have to go to the opposite side of the room to turn it off. And so by that point your body will be more awake and so you'll be less likely to fall back asleep and go to bed and that sort of thing because when you wake up you need to pee or most people need to pee and so not your body will woken up to say yeah you need to pee so you'll go to the toilet and then you'll be like awake and so you won't go back to sleep get my logic good now bonus tip related to the previous tip is if on your phone you have the option to have reminders set going after like the alarm or a podcast starting then do it because it takes it requires more time and effort to turn that podcast off like reminders they'll go but if you set a podcast up to start playing you're gonna have to it requires more effort to turn it off and so that noise is gonna wake your mind up now i just i have it like that on my phone and even though i turn the podcast off straight away so i don't actually listen to the podcast it's a better way to wake me up and it wakes me up easier granted sometimes i do end up falling back asleep but it does have a higher success rate for me than if i was just to have an alarm and also because it requires more effort to turn it off you're gonna sit up to turn it off and so you're less likely to go to sleep whereas if you're lying down and you turn your phone off you can just quickly nod back off whereas if you sat up it wakes you up and so you're less likely to feel groggy during the day because you wake up during that time and so during the time when you're like just waking up after that you could read a book or scroll through social media watch a youtube video like nothing like productive productive but just do something that because when you read, scroll through social media, watch a YouTube video, your mind's becoming engaged and so your mind is waking up and so you're not going to fall back to sleep. Tip number three is go to bed by midnight. You're going to hate me for saying that but if you don't go to sleep till four or five o'clock you're not going to wake up before twelve. Your body needs sleep. It needs six, seven at is it six or seven or is it seven or eight? Let's say seven or eight. Your body needs seven slash eight hours of sleep per night. Just work this out. From four, add seven. That's eleven. And if your body's really tired and the the thing is is that's the amount of time it's recommended before you have like an alarm going off. But your body's probably going to sleep 9, 10 hours. That's already after 12. So if you want to wake up before 12, you need to go to bed before 12. And because I know there are people who are still up at 4 or 5 o'clock. I know. And okay, yes, there are some people who can't help it because they, they have insomnia. But if you can't help it and it's just your fault, then go to sleep before 12. Because if you force your body to wake up after only 4 hours, it's going to be cranky and you're just not going to be a nice person to be around. And it's just going to increase like any negative thoughts you have 
Whereas if you wake up after like seven hours, your body is more awake, more refreshed, and it's ready to get on with the day. Like, and you're gonna have a, be a much more productive day, or at least what feels to be a much more productive day. Even if it's just you reach the next level on a game or something, or you have seven more kids in on The Sims in that time, like it's just something like that. Because I understand that not everyone's going to actually have work to do or a project to do to work on. So I know for me at the moment, I've just got CPD stuff to work on for my college, but before assignments have been finished, and so now. Like, I'm back to doing my YouTube stuff and it makes me so happy because during this time when I'm at home I don't, like when I've got time off, I don't want to do college work and so, and I will always want to focus more on YouTube and so having this time to focus on YouTube is just great. Like, I love it. I love this time. And what I mean by go to bed before 12 is turn your phone off, turn your TV off, turn any turn your technology off like stop going on it and turn your light off and go to sleep because it's a like it's all right turning off your light at 12 but if you don't put your phone down till two then it's not going to work and because the thing is is if you're like me i don't go to sleep straight away as i go to sleep at 12 i it does take me like an hour sometimes two to actually get to sleep and so with that time my body then needs like seven eight hours to sleep now granted i i've been able to fall asleep pretty quickly at the moment and and so i've actually been giving my body more like five hours sleep five five six hours sleep because i've been waking up at six and i got so much done like i this is my third video of the day like i've not done that in probably months like I've had such a productive day I've also uploaded a video onto the YouTube system ready for Friday and I've just gotten so much done today that and I'm really happy about that so waking going to sleep early I mean you can wake up at the earlier times at like seven eight o'clock to get stuff done especially if you do work from home now, disclaimer, I'm going to be reading from my notes here because I feel like I've captured what I wanted to in my notes, but I know that people struggle to stop to sleep due to insomnia, sleep apnea or chronic illnesses such as fibromyalgia and multiple sclerosis or MS as it's commonly known. And so I know that falling asleep isn't going to be easy and so for those people these tips might not apply to them and I just want to disclaim that not every single method is going to work for everyone as I'm not an expert. These tips are for people who no longer have a sleep schedule or a sleep routine and want to get back on track. Tip number four, make a to-do list the night before. Now this, you might think, what, why? But the thing is, is if you write down all the stuff you want to accomplish in a day, you'll realise that you've got this much stuff to do, you need to get up earlier. And so you're gonna make the effort to go to sleep earlier at by 12 o'clock. So then you can wake up at like the seven, eight o'clock and get all these jobs done, like the household jobs or what, like just get all these jobs done. Having a to-do list and knowing what you need to do gives you like a reason why you need to wake up. Whereas if you've got nothing to do and all you could do is play Sims 4, then you're not gonna get up early unless you're really really motivated to have many many children on sims 4 but other than that don't think so honestly i have days where i literally feel tempted to just play sims 4 all day or like even have a week to play sims 4 all day but college just keeps setting me more and more work not happy about but have to it and it's also because without a to do list if you wake up even if it's like eight nine o'clock you're gonna go back to sleep because there's not you don't 
because you think there's no point waking up this early so you go back off and before you know it it's like one so that's why it's important to make a to-do list so you know what you need to get done even if it's just something simple as empty the dishwasher clean the kitchen which I kind of forgot to do today because I was just so excited about a delivery I got that it threw me off a bit like after the morning I sort of forgot like my reason why today for waking up was I was expecting a delivery and my mum was going to wake me up anyway but not as early as I woke up I was expecting a delivery and I wanted to film a video on the haul and I wanted to do my makeup for the video and then I decided actually I can make it I can film another video for the doing the makeup and it was like yeah and then but I already had the plan of I want to make this video today so hence the reason why I'm making three videos but last night I actually know this morning I exported the video and then I put it up so it was sort of like I couldn't have said I've been productive it's YouTube side productive but I've been productive I did put a load of washing on for my mum though so tip number five is read something before you get to bed now some of you are probably thinking ugh reading but I'm not necessarily meaning like a fiction or non-fiction book it can just be like a magazine like if you've got a magazine read it preferably non-technology but if you've got ebooks then ebooks are all right but just reading something can help relax your brain calm you down and it can set your mind into that sleep mode and it because when you're calm and chill you're more likely to fall asleep because i know that if i'm sat in bed i then like after a while i can feel sleepy so making sure so if you're sat in bed like, doing nothing or i don't know maybe just collecting your thoughts for the day and just thinking or even if it's just like writing out what you've done today like what you've been grateful for for that day or like I said reading like fiction whether it be fiction non-fiction like it could be a crime novel or it could be a book about dinosaurs or flowers or something just reading something can help relax your brain and it can help you fall asleep easier which means that you're gonna sleep either sleep for longer if you're maybe struggling to sleep for a long amount of time or you're going to get a better quality of sleep and it means you're going to fall asleep easier because if you struggle to go to sleep this is going to help you because fall asleep sooner meaning you'll be able to wake up earlier than what you usually did so that let's say you didn't read and you went to bed at 12 but you can get to sleep till like 3 and then you'd sleep till 12 whereas if you read a book from like 11 to 12 or even half 11 to 12 and relax your brain you can maybe fall asleep by half one meaning you could either have an extra hour and a half sleep or wake up an hour and a half earlier so you're gonna have a better quality of a day and you're actually not gonna miss as much of the day compared to before tip number six is turn on the yellow light on your phone tablet ipad if your laptop has that option then do it on your laptop as well and this is because the yellow light helps you go to sleep because it mimics the sun when you were outside and you're doing stuff even if it's just a walk the sunlight can like the sun affects your circadian rhythm which is another way of saying your internal body clock and so when you go out for a walk or you spend out time out in the sunlight the sunlight tires you out and so having yellow the yellow light can help signal to your brain it's almost time to go to sleep and it will start like shutting down well not like not shutting down but you get what i mean and it will just help you fall asleep easier whereas if you maintain the blue light your your body's gonna stay awake and for longer like you're going to have a harder time falling asleep meaning you're going to sleep till later in the day meaning you're not going to wake up before 12 so 
turning that yellow light on or maybe if you want to go for a more expensive version because well, turning, on, turning on the yellow light is obviously free but if you wanted to go down a pricier route you could buy those like blue light glasses that cancels it out so if you want to buy them but just turn on the yellow lights from like 10 at the latest because then especially if you're on your phone for like the two hours before you get to bed it's just easier and it helps your body go to sleep that's just cool tip number seven is tire yourself out physically or mentally this could be by doing a workout or doing like a word search or a crossword or like i don't know like a cryptography type thing because with the current situation if you've maybe finished your schoolwork and you've got limited schoolwork you're not going to be doing it every day and so because you're not doing it every day your body's not using up the energy you usually would so before if you're in education from monday to friday if you're in secondary school that is for college it's different because i'm only in college three days a week but i have placement too but in terms of education on the days you're in college or school you're there from it can be from nine till five i know with college some i'm two of the days i was there nine till half is it nine till half three well one was nine till three one was nine till half three but during that time you're doing work and you're getting tired because you you like your teachers told you so much information that it just tires you out ment mentally and if you do a workout then you get tired physically and it but and it uses up the energy you've got whereas if you don't do anything during the day then you're when it comes to you wanting to go to sleep you're still going to have all this excess energy and so whilst your body's get using up that energy you're going to stay awake and during that time you're probably going to go on your phone meaning that when you do get tired it's going to take longer to go to sleep because of the blue light and then you're not gonna wake up until after 12 which is why it's important to do something like even if it is just work around the house like you're doing something like do something to tie you out start a project I don't know what project, but think of something you've always wanted to do, whether that be YouTube, writing a book, starting a blog, like just some, do something that's going to make you work. Like you don't have to work 24 seven. You don't have to work five hours solid. It can just be like an hour or two every like Joss said about the day, just doing something and it's work and it's going to use up some energy and it's going to it's just going to tire you out which is why it's good to do something and just get through it so for example i might edit a video tonight and that's going to tire me out because it's also going to frustrate me it's it tires me out it makes me think and it's that thinking that makes you tired it works your brain and so when your brain gets tired you want to fall to you want to fall asleep so but then again i also fancy sims 4 tonight because i haven't gone on sims 4 in a few days so it's like mm, let's continue on with making 100 babies tip number eight is to stop drinking caffeine fizzy drinks late and also like stop eating really late as well and um, with sugary caffeine drinks you're giving your body that excess energy that your body doesn't need and so whilst your body's busy burning off that energy you're going to be awake because it's going to give you this boost of energy whereas when you want to go to sleep that's when you're supposed to have less energy but if you give it fizzy drinks later on it's going to keep you awake this could be a coffee it could even be coke it can be like monster even the white monster can still keep you awake and so with that with coke i recommend 
stopping that by nine if you go to sleep at 12. So I've like three hours before. With energy drinks, I'd say last one about half four because of the energy that's in them. And with like the coffee, maybe half five, six o'clock pushing it. Just because that way your body gets to use up that energy. And in terms of eating and not eating too late, a light snack is okay. So if you have maybe an apple an hour before bed or a few grapes, that's okay. But no heavy meals, like no fatty foods, no like steaks or something that's going to fill up your tummy. Because then when you go to go to bed, it's going to sit heavy and it's going to feel heavy in your stomach. And it's not going to digest as quickly. Whereas if you're awake when you eat this large meal, your body's going to di digest it and it's going to be so much easier. So if at night you're feeling a bit peckish, have a piece of fruit. If you still want to eat, drink some water. If you still want to eat, do something. Because you, that's your, most of the time, the reason why you want to eat is because you're bored. So if you do something, like could be some sport, could be reading a book, watching YouTube, you'll find you don't do, you won't eat, like you won't have that temptation because your mind is just bored. It needs, you need to give it attention, like it needs to be stimulated. So it could be, like I said, YouTube, or it could be a crossword, cross stitch, sims, like just doing something to take your mind off of that and you'll find that you're not actually hungry. Like if your tummy is rumbling, then okay, yeah, maybe you are hungry and you should get something. But also if your tummy is rumbling, drink some water first if you haven't had a drink of water in a while. Because sometimes when your body's telling you you're hungry, it's actually thirsty. So you need to give it the liquids it needs. So I, like, I'm drinking maybe about 1.2 litres at least a day. I know you're supposed to drink 2 litres, but don't get onto that. But I'm making sure my body's got enough water throughout the day. And even though I'm picking out mushrooms in dinners because I don't like mushrooms, let me know in the comment section if you agree. Like, do you like mushrooms? Let me know. And so, but also I find like, I'm satisfied earlier and I don't need to eat as much and okay yes if it's a dinner I really like I will let myself get like to the stuffed point where I don't want to move but typically I go to the point where I'm satisfied or if I get like bored of the taste so like sometimes if I've eaten enough of a dinner after a while I'll just get bored and think I don't want to eat any more of this and so I won't but don't eat too late or drink caffeine too late. Water's alright and like squash, like the no added sugar squash is right. But nothing fizzy. Like if let's say you love, love, love like Vimto, maybe go out and buy some Vimto squash. Because that way, and the obviously the sh like no added sugar version. And drink that because that way you'll still get the Vimto taste but you won't get the caffeine necessarily from Vimto and so and also you're still getting your water intake so it's like a double bonus like a win-win you increase your water intake and you also stop caffeine drinks earlier I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to smash a massive thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below because I'm aiming for 1000 subscribers one for three zeros let me know any videos you want to see from me or any tips or like like I said earlier any tips anything that's helped you and I'll see you guys in my next video and also share it share this video if you think this is going to help someone else and I'll see you guys in the next video bye